part 8 to the Sonic.exe tutorial series. This series is not far from being a year old. So in this video we're going to be making an I am God type of screen or just an ending screen for your game which has been used a lot throughout EXE games and it's all over the place. It's in the original game, it's in the original creepypasta and uh, although these screens are kind of overused a little bit especially the line I am God itself I never really liked how he said that in the first place but that line is also a bit overused so for this tutorial I'm just gonna be doing a different line it's still gonna be like an I am but it's gonna be something else and I really recommend that you also try to pick something different or come up with something else unless you're making a sonic.exe remake or like a sonic.exe take of yours that's really your only excuse to um make it still say i am god if i'm being honest speaking of sonic.exe takes there's a quick little shout out in this video a game created by paul2733 or polio uh i'm probably pronouncing those incorrectly or saying them incorrectly because i am awful with names sonic.exe alternate reality deluxe edition quite a long name if you ask me this is a custom sonic.exe take created by polio with the help of empty name origin and myself I created the I'm God sprites for this screen and really that's kind of all I did. It's kind of a funny story of how I became involved with the project. Two days before uh, it was going to release, Origin had DM'd me and said uh, like, yo my friend, uh, he's, his birthday's in two days, he's releasing his game and he needs these I'm God sprites done within like two days, think I could do it and I just accepted it because I had nothing better to do. So, uh, I had made those sprites, and those are the sprites I'm gonna be using for this tutorial, which I'll show you in a second. And, uh, I really recommend you check out the game. A lot of big EXE YouTubers like Sunfire and Luigi Kid had, uh, have already played it. Maybe Mark is probably next. While it may be just another Sonic.exe take, it is a really good, atmospheric-wise, a really good Sonic.exe take. It's got some puzzles as well that makes it a bit original. There are a few things that kind of take away the uniqueness, but overall, I still think it's a really good Sonic.exe take. I really recommend you go check it out. Link in the description. I know the game page is posted by someone completely different. He's just the publisher for some reason. But if you look in the credits, you'll see everything. Paul is the main director of it. Origin and me were... I mean, really, I made the I'm God sprites and Origin kind of described them and like what he wanted to me. And that uh, empty, empty name apparently helped with some sprites as well. Anyway, that's it for that shout out. Go check out the game and on to the tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so just like every tutorial, I'm just going to show off what we're going to make real quick. Uh, the text I made in here is pretty goofy because I did not really want to take the time to come up with something serious that would have sounded cliche. <laughs> So that's the screen that we're going to be making today. It kind of has a bit of an example of what uh, most I'm God screens usually have. Obviously, you have there's like endless limits to what you can try to do, all the effects you can put in, all that cool stuff. But uh, I'm just going to cover the most used ones and most popular ones. So. Um, Something else I will actually cover real quick since a lot of people have been asking for it is a, a data select where everybody is dead. For some reason that specific thing has been asked for it, but it's too short and specific to kind of have its own video so I'm just going to keep it in here. So uh, kind of ignore that one. So we're going to go off this old data select screen that I made like about a year ago back like uh over a year ago dang uh so yeah this was like the first ever sonic.exe tutorial video from me the code in this is like a little bit funky since it was coded by younger me when i didn't have as much knowledge but i'm gonna try to work with it so this is going to assume you already have the data select screen made so basically we can just take it and copy and paste it and make sure we name it to where uh I already put in everyone dead so I'll just put in dead here just so you know the difference and 
it's easier to make it a different frame than to kind of have this one frame change so uh, obviously now you just want to kind of add all the dead character sprites now I don't have any on me at the moment so I'm gonna just be lazy and uh, do this okay so just pretend that these are gory looking dead sprites of all the characters and now we at least know the difference I'm gonna try to go with the this the best I can because obviously I don't know if you used my tutorial for uh, making this if you made it on your own then I can still help you with it so uh, basically for this find whatever code you use to uh, make it to where when you press enter it goes to another character so for me that's all this code down here so all this down here I'm just gonna get rid of it you can still have the little uh, selection tool thing like move around but you basically want to make it where if you press enter it's not gonna work like it won't take you anywhere it won't make I mean you can make it make like the little locked sound effect if you want I'm not gonna but uh, also one more thing I actually forgot to do was a uh, take the little lock here and just throw it on tails why did it go to layer one everyone lock dead looking sprites dead looking sprites in here and then uh you can't you can't like enter select any of them but you can still move the thing around if you want to get rid of the selection tool then you can just get rid of that if you want as well but i'm just gonna keep it in there because i think it's all right um and then you kind of just want this to be a time unless you want it to happen on a specific thing then uh, I'm just gonna have it be a timed event so like after five seconds of kind of sitting there giving the player time to like kind of take in that uh, everyone's dead uh, I already have a black screen here if you don't then just create an active object make it black and stretch it across the whole screen because uh, I am I already have it to set as invisible start so after five seconds I'm just gonna make it reappear and then uh, after uh, maybe like seven seconds or something will make it jump to the frame which is going to be the message frame which obviously we don't I mean I've this test one down here but uh we're gonna make a new one so uh you, what you can really do actually is just go to new frame here and then name it to whatever the character is gonna say so uh I'll just name it to I am him I guess so uh we'll name it to that and uh, it's gonna be like a basic default frame so there's a few things we need to do uh, first of all if you uh, you don't have to do this but if you want your background to be black or if you just want it then yeah just go in here make this black you can make the background black if you want because I know most screens are gonna have that unless you have your own sprites for the background then uh, you can just make the background black so uh, with simple sonic worlds these extensions here uh, this one might not be there this is just a sonic fade system thing I don't think I've gone over this in a tutorial but I actually should one day now that I think about it but uh, uh yeah this is just a old like warning screen test but uh these extensions here you can grab them from any frame uh, probably this too copy it and then make sure it is in this frame here because uh I can actually show you real quick what it would look like without it so you see what it's like without them and then uh, put these in here now it kind of syncs up this is kind of this engine specifically but now it kind of syncs up with that and gets the uh, big ish kind of screen so now we want to add the sprites of Sonic himself so I should have I should have said this before uh, I'm going to be using these sprites right here that I made for Paul's game uh, we have one right here where he's kind of like frowning a little bit uh, I think this one actually was edited a bit um, before it put was put in the final game like not edited by me uh, I think like Paul reversed the smile or, or reversed the frown I think yeah, and then the eyes were a bit different, but uh, yeah, this is like what the original thing really was, if you're wondering. Uh, and then we have like a slight smile, a bit more of a bigger smile, and then the kind of jump scare type of frame where his hands are here, the perspective kind of changes. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to do it the manual way and create an active object, go to import, and uh, 
here's all the sprites here there's versions of it without the eyes that I just have here but I'm gonna use the versions with the eyes so um, I'm gonna so yeah I'm just gonna import these like that I'm gonna do import as animation just because of the way I named them they'll actually import like that and uh, want to center it hold alt to click that to make sure it's perfectly centered and then under we want to make a well I need to make a new frame to get this guy in and then uh, center it and uh, yeah so uh, obviously you're gonna have custom animations most likely for your I am God screen so it's gonna be a bit of a different process for you you could yours could be animated uh, yours might just be one still frame the whole time I just have these four frames that it will transition through so uh, one more thing uh, make that z make that speed there zero because even if you have an animation that kind of needs to play you can adjust that anytime you want uh, even though this could be an animation here uh, I'm not gonna use it as one I'm just gonna have it have it mm, voice crack uh, have it transition between text here and then on the jump scare kind of go to this all right so we have this guy now we wanna we should probably name him name him like Sonic or something and then probably get it in uh, the perfect horizontal center and then uh, just drag it down to where the body kind of cuts off if you have a part where the body cuts off because uh, I do here so uh, now we have him kind of here and he's just uh yeah he's just here he's a uh, not perfectly there I gotta drag him okay now I think uh, yeah, now he's covering the whole bottom of the screen so he's just kind of here now chilling and uh, now we want to get the text so uh, there's two different ways you could do this you can use a string that allows you to switch between paragraphs and it kind of allows you to say a lot of different things or if you are a really good pixel artist and you think that you can draw out some really good looking text then I really recommend you do that because you can like have a bit more control over it and it can just look cooler if you're good at pixel art if you don't think you're good at pixel art then uh, you can just use a string for this example I am going to use a string because I don't have sprites of the text prepared because the text for uh, Paul's game he made those himself so uh, yeah I only made the sprite so on this string I'm gonna uh, drag it big under here I'm gonna set it to center and then I'm gonna perfectly align it like that and uh, in here you can kind of just do whatever you want in here like change like choose whatever um, font you want the size of it I'm gonna go for the Sonic Advance 2 font with a size of maybe 14 I can't see it I should probably do like white or red yeah 14 is good so uh, yeah definitely do a color where they can see the text really well so uh, now we have this and I am going to just type in some random stuff I might actually just say the same stuff I did before you probably have some custom message you're gonna put in here so put in that message right here in like different paragraphs and different uh, yeah just like different paragraphs and different sections to switch between and uh, yeah I'll be right back with typing these in Alright, so I've got four paragraphs here prepared for dialogue, and uh, they're all just stupid stuff that I thought of. Obviously, unless you're making a parody game, then you're probably going to do something serious, but I'm just thinking of stupid stuff. I kind of reworded what I had already put in there. First, what we should actually do is set this to be invisible at the start there. It's going to turn into this little thing. This is what happens when you make text. Vis uncheck visible start like that a string turns into that so in this case I actually don't really have any startup events that I'm gonna have uh, if you do you should definitely have a start of frame and set those but uh, what I'm gonna do is the timer events so is ty timer equal to a certain value so uh, let's say I'm gonna give it like two seconds before anything happens and then this is when we will take the string and make it reappear again and then uh, we can copy that if you want and go in here and like 
I'd say give it like five seconds maybe. I mean, if your text is really long, then make it a bit of a longer time to wait in between. But uh, if it's kind of short, you can have it be a little shorter or you can keep it all the same. I'm gonna keep it all at five seconds. And then uh, set paragraph, we'll go to next paragraph. So we'll do that again. I'm just gonna add five seconds, so I'll make it 12. Go to the, I'll go to edit, go to the next paragraph and then again at 17 go to the final paragraph here so now the text is going to be able to go through here and it'll be invisible at the start so as you see it's invisible and then uh the text will appear we can kind of say this is like him talking if you want to add a tiny little sound effect here for the text appearing then you can do that i believe uh i think i yes i do this so this right here if you have a sound effect like that you want to use, you can just put it in on all of these here to allow it to appear. So now we want to work on the animations changing throughout these different ones. So this is really going to depend on how your animation is. So for me, these are going to sequence through each time. So like we got frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four. So uh, at the start there, I can kind of just leave it. We don't really need anything to happen. Uh, in the second one, animation change, animation frame. Uh, remember the first frame is gonna equal zero in this, so you wanna set that to one. And then uh, I'll just drag this down here to copy it, and then go in here, we'll do two, and then three. So now we should have something like this. It's invisible at the start. There are 99 children in the basement right now. Text appears. You're about to make number 100, and then it changes the animation a little bit. Why do I do this? Because, and then changes animation again. I am him. And then uh, this will be our jump scare frame. Now obviously this is really lame and there's nothing too special with it right now. So we are going to make it special and add some effects. There are a lot of different effects that have been going around in EXE games, but I'm going to show the most commonly used ones. First of all, the kind of a uh, glitching back and forth effect um yeah i'll show that so uh this kind of glitching colorful uh hopefully you saw what i meant it's kind of like it you, maybe you've seen it if you've played one last round it's overused in there if you've played other exe games it's probably in there somewhere uh, i'm going to show how to make that real quick so with the way we're going to do this i recommend you put this in a group so that way we can stop it anytime uh we want to so uh, first we wanna just have an always event here, and then we'll also just add a only one action when event loops event. And then uh, first under here, we want to set a few things. So uh, not under the sound, my bad. Uh, under the frame here, under uh, yeah, frame, effect, set effect parameter. This is gonna become a little bit repetitive real quick, but basically we're gonna change the XY value of red, green, and blue for every single one to be a random range between negative uh, uh, 5 to 5. So basically, uh, the parameter name we want to change, uh, it's going to be stuff like R and then a lowercase x or a lowercase y for red, x, and y, and then B like lowercase x or lowercase y, and then G for green and lowercase x and lowercase y, not U, Y. And then, yeah, that's kind of it, you get the point. So start at like red, lowercase x here, and then uh, the parameter value, it's just going to be, you can just click random range right here, and the minimum can be negative five, and the maximum can be five. This is the most basic it's gonna be, like this is gonna be the most similar to other EXE games. Obviously, you can make those values as small or as big as you want. And uh, now we have that one done there, so we basically have to do that for every other one. So then we'll want to go in here and do say uh r y now and make sure uh the x and y are capital and that the r b and g are all uppercase and then i kind of same thing negative five to uh five i actually recommend just taking that copying that with Control c and then uh just going through and setting that so we've made the x ones now or that, that. we've made the red ones now so now we're going to go in here and then we'll do the BX and then we'll just paste that in there so that way it's like that and we kind of just keep going with that so next we'll do like uh, 
Next we'll do B Y. So if B Y paste that in there and then just do that for green. So like G X and G Y and then that's it for that line right there. All right, so I finished it right here. This is what it should look like right here in case you just wanna quickly verify that you've done it right. And then under this only one action when event loops, we want to under the frame set effect to be uh it's gonna be channel where is it the effect is going to be channel offset right here that we're gonna send so you can just look up channel and then find it right here uh you can actually see here these were the parameters that we were using right here uh there's these extra ones here as well but we don't have to use those we only have to use the r g and b so uh we just select that to always set it to that so now we have that set right there. So if we were to open this now, you can actually see that it's already working here and that it's gonna be going like this. So obviously the higher you bring those numbers, the crazier it's gonna go, the lower they are, the not so crazy it's gonna go. So uh, the reason we put it in a group is so that way we can have like a start of frame right here. We can have it deactivate the group at the start so that way we can have it be normal for a while and then when the time comes, which would be the timer equals 17, we can go to group, activate, and we can activate it and then it will activate when uh, that happens and it'll kind of be like a jump scare thing. And uh, if you have a sound effect you wanna use for your jump scare, then definitely use that. Uh, I have this one right here that I'm gonna end up using. I'll link it in the description if you want to use it as well. You probably have your own though, but just in case, I'll link that right there. So let's uh, take a look at how this is so far. So as you can see, that created the effect right there. And we can make sure you can see the text and mainly see him. I know it kind of cuts him off like right there, but that is all right. That's just the way I made the sprite. Also, maybe you don't want to have the text appear play at that final jump scare moment. Uh, an okay, so another effect I'm going to be showing is a kind of a shake. Even though I know that the uh, this uh, the glitch effect here already kind of created a shake for us if um, this would kind of be like a shake on its own so if you want it to shake but you don't want to have the color effect then this is gonna be how to do that I've showed this in previous tutorials before but I'm just gonna do it again so we want to have this active object right here and we'll just name it center object and uh, and uh, we just want to put it in the center obviously so something like that uh, another thing I forgot on the frame here if you want this shake to work these have to be higher than uh, the frame itself here so on the these the size here uh, just change that to something like um, maybe just 1000 to 1000 don't worry this does not affect the actual frame it still appears tiny like this and it does not affect the other frames as well as long as you don't do it in here if you do it in here then it will affect all the frames and you will kind of um, maybe not ruin it because you are able to just undo it but uh in here just set that to those or just any number that's big enough for this to kind of shake around we kind of give it room to shake around in here that's really what we're doing to be honest so in the object in the active object here under alter alter alterable values i'm sorry we want to have three different values we're going to have center x going to have center y and we're going to have amp so those are the values you need for this center object right here so first what we want to do is so under the start of frame here first we want to set the value of center x and center y to the actual y coordinate so say set center x to the x coordinate of the object and then do the same thing for uh center y so set center y to the y coordinate of the object and then we want to create an always event just make a new one since in here it'll get disabled and it'll kind of break it a little bit 
Um, under in here, we want to do a bit of math here and we want to set the position. So we'll do the X coordinate. Want to set that to um, the center X value plus sign and then a random and some random number like 628. You can put those together if you want. Uh, if it says error, make sure there's two closing brackets right here. And then we want to do times the value of amp. So just go in here, get amp, and this is what we're doing here. It's a bit of math, but uh, that's kind of what we're doing there. I, Yeah, I, I remember covering this in the past now. So then we do the same thing for y, except it's slightly different. We go to y here. We get the value of center y, except we do plus coast now we still do random and we'll do 628 I'll just put those together and then times the value of amp again so now we have those right there and uh, another thing under always under storyboard controls under scrolling center window position in frame select to be relative to the object so that way the window will follow the op or the frame will follow the object uh, you're able to have that follow the window like if you put this here under uh, window control then uh, you are able to make the window shake just like that so now basically the strength of the shake is being controlled by the amp value here so we can put up the amp value like at 50 at the start of the screen and we you will see it'll shake a lot here now uh, the reason the text isn't shaking is because strings end up on default they end up getting set to uh, under runtime options follow the frame they get set to not follow the frame if you want the text to shake as well then check follow the frame you'll notice on the sonic.exe sprite he's already following the frame but uh because we want it to only shake on a certain event we'll just have that at zero and then uh, under timer equals 17, we can just go to the object here, go to alterable values, set set the amp, and we can set it to whatever you want. The higher the number, the more it's gonna shake. I recommend you don't make it go like crazy or else people might not even be able to read the text that you're putting on there. But uh, I'm gonna do 10 since, it all, since the glitch effect here already added a kind of a shake to it. But uh, now let's see what that looks like here. I forgot to hide the object. Okay, just pretend this isn't here. Uh, all you have to do is uncheck visible start for the object and then it'll disappear and my battery is running low. So you'll notice here, it shakes a bit more here. We have the glitch effect on top of the object shaking avec, eff, bleh, effect. So uh, say for example, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to have the glitch at all, then, uh, I'll show you real quick what that looks like. Now it just shakes without the glitch effect here. Obviously it probably doesn't look as cool. You probably do want the glitch effect, but if you wanted to make it shake without the glitch effect, then this is what you can do. And then obviously if you want to have both combined, that's fine. If you only want to have the glitch, that's fine. And um, I think, okay, so under the object here, make that vis unvis uncheck visible start for that before I forget uh, okay final little tiny thing uh, we'll get a little black screen thing so just make an object select black completely make it black and then scale it scale it bigger than the frame itself especially if your frame shake is gonna be strong because then uh, it's gonna the frame might shake like outside of the object here so just make it bigger then the frame here, uh, I'll just name it black. I want to have it where after the jump scare sound effect is done playing, then it'll go to black and everything will stop. And then from there, you can kind of just end your game or roll your credits or whatever you want to have after the actual game itself is done. So um, what I can do in my case for the sound is under samples is a specific sample not playing. I'm going to go find the illusion jump scare sound. But I also want to insert under timer is timer greater than and I'm just going to do something greater than 17 so let's say 18 here uh, yeah 8 okay you have to have this on top here 
and then uh, in that case under the black here we'll make that reappear and uh, I think I checked no I did not so uncheck visible start and then uh, that is kind of kind of it I think so uh, let's kind of go through and see what we have here should probably full screen it so we can see it better So there we go, as you can see, it goes to black after the sound is done, and then from there, you can kind of just have a timer greater than 18 or 17 that will continue on to, like, the credits of the game, or if there's anything else you have planned after that screen. So, um, that is kind of it for this tutorial, I think. Um... I've covered kind of the more popular effects for these types of screens and uh, I al and then I also covered uh, having everyone dead in here and uh, something I actually didn't mention that I should probably mention is that um, after the player has gone through all the levels so say for example after Robotnik if he wherever in here he's gonna die after your whole death sequence and stuff and you have it go to another frame just have it go to this frame here don't even go back to data select just go to this new one here or this one whichever one and then uh, then from there obviously we can actually go back now in here in timer equals seven we can jump to frame I am we'll just do the I am him so we can jump to that and then that will go to this frame here which uh which will play the whole sequence and then after that we'll kind of roll the credits or whatever and that's kind of it for that's that should fully be it for this video um there are a few more things after this video to cover and then after that the sonic.exe tutorial series might be over we'll see i do want to try to keep it alive as much as i can because clearly it's like a really the top one thing I should focus on because if you've noticed like the past four different announcement and celebration videos barely got over a hundred views and then part seven recently re reached 1k I think part one even reached 8.2k which is pretty wild and then my channel reaches 1k subs so um, clearly the Sonic.exe tutorials is what I should stick with if I want to grow this channel. So I do want to try to keep this series alive as long as possible, but uh, I'm not too sure how much more content there's going to be to cover after um, secrets and stuff or any extra little things that I might have missed in the back here. Before people say I missed data select, I technically have an old tutorial on it. And don't worry, uh, this tutorial here, I will remake that one time. Uh, I'm not sure when, maybe when the series is done, I will remake this tutorial and uh, make it better because if you see, it's an hour long because I didn't pre-make anything in this. Like I do here, as you can see, there's this here and this here that were already made because I pre-make all this and then I actually record myself doing it. So um, that's it for this video. Uh, uh, hope you enjoyed hope you learned something L Leave a comment if you have any problems or if you just want to thank me for the tutorial and um, I will see you all in the next tutorial Goodbye